and I'm one of the presenters today. And we're really here just to help you um, in understanding how to prepare in high school for health career or allied forces. And so I'm gonna let Steve and Brady kind of introduce themselves today. My name is Steve Fontana. I am the Director of Academic Advising for Tacoma Community College. And I work um, directly with our advisors in our healthcare pathways at, at TCC, uh, whose role is to help students really navigate these educational pathways and, and help um, lead towards, uh, towards careers and further education. Hi students, my name is Brady Becker and I work for Tacoma Public Schools and I work with uh, high school students exploring uh, careers in healthcare and different internships beyond healthcare. So I'll be talking with you about uh, the importance of ext extracurricular activities in advancing your early career. Happy to be with you. So I'm gonna share my screen real quick. We do have a presentation today. I forgot to introduce myself. My name is Tracy Porter and I'm a admissions counselor at St. Martin's University. And I'm gonna be talking about a lot of the classes or um, courses or programs you can take while you're in high school to help you get prepared for health careers. So I'm just gonna share my screen. And can everyone see this so far? Yep, we can see it. All right. So it's the, the title of this segment, How to Prepare in High School for Careers in Healthcare. And so there are a few type of class programs that you can take, and but there's also outside programs outside of the high school setting that you can take. So one of them is Advanced Placement or AP. So a lot of you will see these while you're in high school or while you are currently in high school. And so Advanced Placement courses are available typically your junior, end of sophomore year. And then you also sometimes have international baccalaureate or IB courses. It does depend on your high school if they do offer these type of classes, but I do know there is some um, offered in Washington State at least, and you can check with your counselor if they are offering IB courses or certifications in high school. And then also another program is called College in the High School or some some schools call it College in the Classroom. It's similar to advanced placement courses where you are in partnership with a, like either a community college or a four year university near your high school. And you, you have a professor or you have a teacher who has been certified to teach advanced placement courses there. So that's another name that you might see when you're looking for classes to prepare you for health careers or allied forces. And most of the times we're, I'm talking about how these will prepare you because if you wanna get um, into healthcare or even an allied force, sometimes you do need to get either an associate's degree or a bachelor's degree or an advanced degree after that. And so taking classes while you're in high school, like the AP courses, the IB courses or college in the classroom will let you get college credits while you're still studying in high school. And so you can transfer those on to your four year or two year um, programs if you want to. So that's something to keep in mind because um, some, some health careers take quite a few years of study. Some of them take shorter amounts of time, but getting those classes earlier on may help you kind of figure out what you wanna do or to help you finish those programs a little bit faster. Also outside of the classroom, there are other programs that you can get involved in. So Running Start, um, some of you may have heard of is where you can attend a two year or three year university while you're in high school. All you need to do is qualify through your high school. So you're passing your classes, you get approval from your advisor to take college classes while you're in high school. And what's nice about this program is that typically it's very cost effective or sometimes depending on um, your income that there, it might be paid for by the school if you need it. Another thing is Skill Center. So some schools have this, a lot of programs in high schools in the area and in Washington State have these programs. So Skill, centers, Skill Center is where you can kind of get hands-on technical training while you're in high school. And then there is some trade programs, which we'll learn about more later in the presentation. Oh. Thanks. Thanks, Tracy. <clears throat> so now we're gonna talk a little bit about things you can be doing while you're in high school to prepare for not only life after high school, but life after college. Um, so one of the best ways that you can use your free time while you're in high school uh, to prepare for a career in healthcare is actually connect with a local hospital and look into some volunteer opportunities. So for example, here in Tacoma, we have multi-care health system, which includes 
Mary Bridge Children's Hospital, Tacoma General, Allen Moore Hospital, and then clinics throughout the region. Most of these locations have opportunities for students just like you to volunteer. Um, and volunteers are kind of one way that hospitals allow students and young people to test out what it's like to work in a hospital. Uh, these opportunities are in all sorts of departments. Um, so whether you want to work, you know, in radiology or you want to work in pharmacy, you want to work on the floor and round with patients and um, bring them coffee and things that make them comfortable. There's ways for you to kind of put your feet on the ground and test out a career, test out what it's like to uh, work in the hospital. There's also opportunities to volunteer at food banks. Um, you know, St. Leo's Food Bank being a really uh, accessible one here in Tacoma for you. But volunteering is a really great way to learn about some of your own skills and as a way to kind of put yourself out there. Um, I think it's through putting yourself out there that you'll start to develop confidence. Um, and that confidence can bring about increased competence and sort of a virtuous cycle of putting yourself out there, trying things, serving others, uh, developing your skills as a servant leader. I think that is one of the most important things uh, for anyone who's preparing to uh, pursue a career in healthcare is to have the skills a, a, as a servant leader, someone who sees something that needs to be done and doesn't wait for it to be done, but steps in to help. That's what volunteering is all about. It's about opportunities for you to get in. You're not getting paid, um, but you're just serving. And in the case of volunteering at the hospital, just know that there is a hundred hour volunteer service commitment that the hospital will ask for you in, in the case of uh, multi-care and, um, and CHI Francisc and the other hospital system here in Tacoma. Um, but the great thing is you can pick a shift that uh, it's the same time every week. Um, it could be after school, like they have shifts from four to 8 p.m. Um, they also have shifts on the weekends and some shifts are even 24 hours a day, like in the ER. So there's ways that you can um, get experience and get that uh, experience on your resume. So that's something that you students are starting to hear about, get experience on your resume. Um, volunteering is a place to start. So if, uh, if I would ask you to do one thing as it relates to preparing for a career in healthcare um, outside of school, outside of the classes you're taking and, and all the great work you're doing, like attending today's conference, um, it would be volunteering. Um, and if you're already doing that, kudos to you. Uh, 16 years and older, uh, you're allowed to volunteer in the hospital. But also, you know, if you're interested in a, a healthcare career or even just a, a career outside of healthcare, um, volunteering uh, is available with a variety of businesses. And so just, just look at that as a place to get started. And I understand that many of you may also have jobs. Um, for example, when I was in high school, my mom uh, dropped me off at the old spaghetti factory when I was 15 years old and said, go in and get a job. And I did. And that was great because I was able to work and make tips and save money. Um, but I, I wish I would have spent a little bit more time volunteering as well, set aside some time for myself to volunteer, because I think that that space is really where you start to explore your own strengths. Um, you start to work with other people in settings that are a little bit different than school and a little bit different than typical job settings that you might be exposed to as a high school student. A lot of volunteering opportunities can be in professional environments and that experience can be invaluable for you in helping uncover some of those relationships um, that may open doors for you that may lead to um, future opportunities and so that's the next bullet I want to talk to you about is networking you may have heard of networking and um, networking is an informal way of, uh, of connecting with people who are um, doing the kind of work that you may be interested in doing um, in the future. And so uh, I think next slide, would that be a good place? 
Tracy, can you switch to the next slide? I just want to make sure I'm not. Uh, I think this is our. Let's see. Yes, yeah, so we talked about volunteering and then networking. So networking is, uh, it's kind of an informal conversational process of connecting with people who are at first in your own inner circle. So think of friends that you know on a first name basis. It, this could be folks in your family network, you know, aunts and uncles who, you know, are perhaps say you wanna be a nurse, you have a, you have an aunt or an uncle who's a nurse that might be a place where you could start networking. You would have an informal conversation with someone who's a first degree connection. In that case, you know, someone you know on a first name basis and you ask about what they do for a job. You schedule a time to sit down and you have some questions outlined. Um, and it's kind of a chance for you to practice being a professional. So you show up, you know, dress professionally. Um, you show up on time, you show up maybe, um, uh, you bring coffee or have a virtual coffee. Um, but it's a chance for you just to kind of ask, hey, so what is it like? What's the day in the life of your work like? Um, how did you get to this job? Um, what recommendations would you have for me as someone who may be interested in pursuing this career? And then at the end of that conversation, there's a chance for those, uh, those conversations to lead to follow up meetings with additional people. Those would be second degree connections. And so those secondary connections are friends of friends. So it's a friend of your aunt that you can then go meet with. And those conversations go the exact same way. Um, you'll be amazed with how willing to help out uh, professionals are to young people, because all of us as working professionals have, um, have had folks help us. And so people are more than willing to help you. And so this, uh, this kind of brings us to my number one piece of advice um, for you, Tracy, you can go back to the previous slide. Uh, open as many doors as you can while you're in high school. That was a piece of advice I got when I was in high school. And I can't say how grateful I am for that because you may have an idea of something you wanna do after high school. Um, I'm sure you have something kind of as a placeholder in your mind. Um, but you really, it's a hypothesis, right? You think you want to do something. Um, but what we learn from science is that hypotheses have to be tested. So you have to create little experiences for yourself to really see, is this what I want to do? Does this, when I go and I'm in this environment and I'm talking with people who are doing this work and they're telling their story and I'm seeing what's going on, is there something that clicks within me? Is there something that says, Yes, this is something I want to learn more about. And when you get excited and you feel that, continue to pursue it. Um, continue to seek out opportunities to learn more about that career. And then ask folks that you've networked with <clears throat> for additional contacts and additional opportunities. And it seems kind of weird to be doing this as a high school student, I understand, to reach out and ask for a coffee and have these conversations, you're totally putting yourself out there and it's a little scary, right? You're, you're scared you're gonna get a little embarrassed um, or it's gonna be a dead end. But I would say perhaps the biggest upside to networking, the biggest outcome of it, you guys, is that you'll learn to get comfort, comfortable out of your comfort zone. So you'll, it's all about leaving the comfort zone and moving into the growth zone. Um, many of these networking opportunities aren't going to go anywhere. Um, hopefully they're pleasant conversations for you and you enjoy meeting people and you become a better listener, but it's okay that many of these won't lead anywhere. But the great thing is, is that you will, um, develop your network and opportunities will come as a result of those conversations. People will follow up and say, Hey, I really enjoyed meeting with you for coffee. There's actually a, an opportunity here you may consider. Um, and people will follow up with you. They'll share those opportunities, whether it's a scholarship, whether it's a job, whether it's an internship opportunity. So definitely network, you know, as a result of the uh, volunteer work you're doing. Um, and you can do this simultaneously. Uh, this is an exercise you can, can and should be doing, I would say for sure, as like a, a junior and senior in high school. And you will continue to do it, uh, I'm sure, 
the others would attest, you will continue to do it even beyond high school. You'll continue to network. And that's exactly how you will find jobs in the future. When you think of how um, you get a job, whether it's a, a, a job at McDonald's or if it's a job you know, at a really high level, high paying job, most jobs, like 85% of jobs aren't landed through, um, through the internet and through job application, it's through networking. So um, I encourage you to do it, build your network, opportunities will come through that exercise. Uh, next slide. Um, so then my last piece of uh, advice um, would be to explore internships. So volunteer opportunities and networking can lead to internships. Internship opportunities, there's, there's pl plenty of research that's shown for college students who've had uh, internship opportunities in, while in college. Um, they find themselves much further along in their career in the early part of their career. Um, and I'll just give an example. If you do an internship, uh, say you want to be a physical therapist. If you do an internship with a physical therapist while you're in college pursuing your degree, um, when, that, when that practice is ready to hire someone, even if it's part-time, um, and you have had an established relationship with them as an intern, and say you are willing to do that internship unpaid, when it comes time to offer a job to someone, they could post that job, you know, online and they could go through the, the hassle of uh, interviewing, interviewing and, and, um, and then hiring someone. But if you're there, if you're there and they have a relationship with you, you're kind of front of the line, that opportunity is going to come to you first. That's the way that internships work. And that's why people who do internships find themselves uh, further along in their early career and more satisfied in their early career. And so that's for college students, internships are a no brainer. For high school students, if you wanna challenge yourself to an internship, you are head and shoulders above uh, the competition. You're, you're head of the game. And that's something I help students do at Tacoma Public Schools. So if you are a student, high school student, who'd like help getting an internship, uh, we have a program called Next Move at all of the high schools in Tacoma and we can help help you get an internship and for anyone on this call who's not a Tacoma Public School student I'd be happy to help you as well just because I'm passionate about it. Um, so I think that wraps up this slide for me Tracy and I'll hand it off to our next speaker. Hello everybody uh, my name is Steve Fontana again I'm the director of academic advising over at Tacoma Community College and just, I guess, a, a little background in, in that role. Um, I work with uh, academic advisors um, who are there to help students uh, create educational plans towards career pathways, towards future education. Um, and so as you're thinking about kind of where you're at and the presentation today, and I thought Brady uh, really connected some of the pieces that, that you could be doing now that can prepare you uh, for that next step. And, and one of those is that volunteer work um, and that volunteer experience in, in a healthcare setting because uh, those hours can be directly applied at Tacoma Community College um, in the admission processes for several of our programs. So if you're earning volunteer hours now in high school um, and you wanna come and apply to our ultrasound program, Right, our program is going to look at those hours that you've done, and that's going to boost your admissions. Um, so that's something right away that that you can be doing now um, that can connect to that next step. And so I'm speaking about Tacoma Community College Pathways, but Washington has over 30 uh, community and technical colleges, and uh, our community and technical colleges offer great value to start your pathway in healthcare. Um, our classes are really affordable. The class sizes are very similar to what you're going to find in high school. So most of our classes, you're not going to have more than 25 students um, in a class uh, at a community or technical college. Um, TCC has uh, 31 different programs that we consider health and wellness pathways. So we offer associates degrees. We offer uh, degrees uh, that you can transfer on to a four-year college or university. 
Uh, we offer bachelor's degrees at TCC in health information management uh, and in community health. And we offer a variety of certificate programs. So we have programs that is in uh, as short a time as three months, you can obtain uh, a nursing assistant certificate or an EMT certificate, and you can go right to work in that field. Um, we have uh, two-year programs uh, that are career training programs. So I've listed those here, uh, nursing, uh, diagnostic ultrasound, uh, radiology, respiratory therapy, nuclear medicine technology, uh, which is um, uh, working with uh, cancer patients in, in radiation therapy. Um, EMT program, paramedic program, and then health information technology. So if you came to TCC and you completed any one of these programs, you are ready to get a job, right? So you come to TCC, finish this program, and you are ready for employment. Um, and, and really what I want to say is that TCC is a great starting point um, to come explore uh, a variety of programs, right? And whether you end up transferring on to another college or um, completing one of our programs at TCC, we have advisors that, that will create individualized plans for each and every student um, and help you explore these, these pathways. Um, if we go on to the next slide, um, one of the things I like to talk with students about at TCC is uh, start uh, with the end in mind. So, um, and if you have an idea that you wanna be a doctor or you wanna be a nurse or you wanna be a firefighter, um, and you tell that to an advisor, um, we start with the end in mind. So for example, here you can see I've highlighted in yellow uh, medical school or working as a nurse or working in health, public health. A lot of students tell us uh, where they wanna end up and we work backwards and we say, okay, this is what you need to do to start. And then we help you map out that entire plan. So for example, if a student tells us, I wanna become a, a doctor, um, we would say, okay, at TCC, you would start with an associate's degree in biology or an associate in science degree. We help you create a plan to, to complete that. Uh, and then we help you explore where to go next, right? I listed here UW Tacoma uh, because we have a unique partnership with UW Tacoma uh, here in, in, in Tacoma. And they have a biomedical sciences program, right? And so our advisors are not just helping you uh, at TCC, they're helping you map pathways forward. Um, second bullet point here, we have students that say, hey, I wanna, I wanna become a nurse. And there, there are several pathways to becoming a nurse. Um, and in fact, one of those pathways is right at TCC. You can come to TCC, complete requirements, apply to our nursing program. And when you graduate from TCC, you can go right out uh, and get a job working as a nurse. Uh, and then some students want to continue their education and obtain bachelor's degrees or higher. And we're here to help you e explore that. Um, and then my last bullet point here is just to say that there are so many jobs in, in healthcare um, that are outside the clinical work, right? Where maybe that you are actually taking care of the patient. So there are jobs in healthcare administration, healthcare management, public health. Um, and, and these jobs um, certainly require a degree of math and science, uh, but also uh, classes in economics, in, um, in law, um, in communications, right? And so TCC, we have a strong program um, towards pathways in, in health administration. So working alongside doctors and nurses, working alongside the community offering public health support. And so if you're somebody that um, has struggled in math and science, um, TCC is a great uh, chance to restart your engagement in those math and science coursework, right? Um, uh, but if you're somebody that's that maybe um, is, I don't want to do the math and science, but I still want to work in healthcare, there are plenty of opportunities. So I really just encourage you to consider um, you know, community and technical colleges as that next starting point. 
um, in, in a healthcare pathway. Um, and I guess if we end up with my last slide here is kind of uh, promoting Tacoma Community College, but uh, this is a slide, a picture from, from our healthcare center, the Harned uh, Center for Health Careers at TCC. We have a 70,000 square foot, a huge um, building at the school devoted just to our healthcare programs. Um, we have labs, you can see right here, where students uh, can go and, and participate in a clinical setting, right, right on campus um, and really learn those skills so that you go out and you, um, uh, you can gain employment. Um, and and these, are, these are high paying jobs, they're rewarding uh, professions. Um, people that work in healthcare uh, really love what they do, you know, and, and I think Brady spoke to that, that servant leadership, right? Um, you know, you're out there serving, uh, serving the community. Um, and so it's a lot of work, right? But there's a great deal of reward at the end um, in, in these professions. And, and that's really what I wanted to share with you today. Um, I'll post my contact uh, email here. If, if students have any questions about TCC, now's a great time to be applying to TCC if you're thinking about this fall quarter, um, or if you still have a few years of high school left, um, you know, uh, reach out to us and, and, and let us know how we can, we can help. And I know that there, I saw a couple uh, chats maybe or questions in the chat. Um, I don't know if that's something that we want to answer, but I'd be happy to, if, the, if there are any questions and turn it back over to, uh, to Tracy. Well, thank you, Steve and Brady. Great points. It all kind of connects if you're really trying to figure out if you want a health career or if you want to be in the allied forces. There are lots of pathways to it. There's a lot of resources and people available if you have questions about um, any of the pathways that are available. And there's plenty of resources for you to kind of ask questions, those job shadows, those volunteer opportunities, um, figuring out the classes that you need to take. There is plenty of people that want to make sure you're on the right track and you're you're kind of helping you figure out what career you want and what you want to do with your degree or even the technical or skills training that you you will be receiving. That's why we're here and that's why there are plenty of people around you to kind of help you with it. And then I did see some questions in the chat and I'm trying to just find the first one actually. So there's many. What is the... What if volunteering in healthcare settings is closed right now because of COVID? I can answer that question. That's a great one. And uh, volunteering in the hospitals is limited. It's not, it's not completely closed. So there are some opportunities. Um, if you look on this Coma General website, for example, um, there are opportunities to be a screener. Um, so actually taking people's temperature when they come in um, and several others. Um, but yes, it's very limited, limited at the time being. I, I'm hoping that in the next six months, though, they'll be revamping the, the volunteer programs and offering way more opportunities. In the past, they've had, you know, at MultiCare alone, several hundred volunteers in a, at any given time. So hopefully we'll be back there um, in a very short period of time. But volunteer opportunities are out there, if you look, um, and I'm happy to connect you with some of those um, opportunities. I put my email in the chat. I see that Faradosh, you mentioned there's a CNA program at your school, which is fantastic. And then you also mentioned that, um, is it value to sp speak another language? And Brady had kind of already touched on this. It is very, but very, very valuable to speak another language or even ASL and being able to sign as well. Um, there's people from many different backgrounds, many different uh, religious, ethnical language backgrounds and being able to communicate with those individuals that maybe don't speak English because not everyone speaks English here or they come from a different ethnic or cultural background is, is a need right now. And it's an asset for student, for individuals that are looking in these jobs or in any profession. So if you're interested in working in healthcare or the allied forces or the technical training skills in those programs, being able to speak another language or to do ASL um, or even having that a different cultural experience or background is an asset whenever you're looking at these jobs. Definitely a great thing to have. Yeah, 
And if you don't, that's also okay. Just engaging with these people and kind of getting experience with these those different groups or those different communities is also an asset to you. I see a question here that I can answer. So Ashley, I'm only a freshman. What do you recommend to help me start on the path to a healthcare career? I'm interested in becoming a dietitian. So Ashley, I'm assuming you're 14, 15 years old and good for you for you know, thinking this early and wanting to explore that career. So a couple of things I talked about in the uh, presentation would be available to you. Um, so the networking and the volunteering would both be available to you. So I would recommend starting on those um, as soon as you're ready. And you could start even with, um, you know, your own people in your own circle, like your own doctor, um, your own dietitian, um, and even perhaps something connected to your school district, um, uh, or even working on a farm. So there's a number of different ways that you could start to explore that career path available to you as a freshman. Hope that helps. And Steve, I don't know if you can answer this question. One of them is, does being a CNA count towards volunteer hours towards med school or becoming a physician? Because I know that isn't there a CNA program at TCC or the ability to get certified through the school? Yeah, so I think, uh, you know, being a CNA, that's, that's like paid work. So they're not going to look at that as volunteer work, but they will look at it as like healthcare experience. So for example, you know, I know a physician assistant school um, requires like, several thousand hours of healthcare experience and being a CNA can, can, you can use those hours. Chloe might be able to answer that question as well. And thinking about medical school and the hours um, needed. Yeah. When you're talking about getting, getting clinical experiences for the purpose of medical school, um, you have to look at them in a couple different tiers. So whenever you're working in a paid position like CNA, that is considered the highest level, if you will, and then volunteering and then shadowing, right? And so, you know, as a pre-med undergraduate student, it's a career that you have to manage and you're not gonna have a lot of time. So knowing how to prioritize is going to be essential for you to have a successful um, resume and activities and the GPA and the MCAT score and everything in between. So when it comes to clinical experiences, yes, paid positions like CNA count at the highest level and then come volunteering and then come um, shadowing. Also on top of that, they're looking for a um, variety of um, uh, exposure to different, uh, different types of um, fields and specialties. So for example, rather than shadowing one ob for 300 hours, which one of my students have done before, um, you want to do 50 hours with a pediatrician, maybe um, you know, 100 hours of volunteering in ER, uh, 50 hours with um, oncologists and things like that. So variety and more um, responsibility slash paid positions um, in terms of clinical exposure is what you're looking for. And I don't know if anyone's answered in the chat. Juliet, is there any medical programs that this summer that you know of and are you in, and I'm interested in attending? Uh, Steve, do you know any? I know UW has a summer program, but that's the only one I can think of. Yeah, you know, um, TCC has a summer CNA program, so certified nursing assistant. Um, but as, as far as more like a more like a healthcare, like educational program, yeah, University of Washington has um, that SHEP program. It's like a healthcare um, educational career programs. Um, I'm not aware of any more kind of internship or educational opportunities, more of the, the like career or training programs um, that, are, that are available. I could add to uh, that that um, MultiCare has what's called a MASH camp. It was formerly known as Nurse Camp. Um, it's too late to sign up this year, but certainly look, look to that for next year. Um, I would also say that um, Tacoma Public Schools has a certified nursing assistant CNA program in the summer. Um, that application is open right now to 11th graders if you're a TPS student. There's also the Pierce County Skills Center, which will have summer programs. I'm not exactly sure which would be in the healthcare pathway, but that's one other place to look. And, and that's great to hear, you know, um, taking advantage of like a CNA program, you know, for example, most nursing programs 
at the community colleges require students to have a CNA license. Um, so if you're thinking ahead about nursing, um, you know, getting that CNA license paid for or getting an opportunity to get it done earlier uh, is, a, is a great opportunity. And I also saw several questions about, you know, entering a military service versus education. And, uh, you know, the experience that I have in working with students, um, TCC works with a lot of uh, veteran students, a lot of active duty military. And, and one uh, point, and Chloe might be able to speak to this too, is that the military often will pay for advanced degrees in, in healthcare careers. So if you have an associate's degree or a bachelor's degree completed, and let's say you want to become a doctor or you want to become a more advanced career, and you enter the service already having some level of education and you're intending to pursue that advanced degree, you tell the military, this is what I want to do. Um, I've seen them have programs where they will pay then for that advanced education, provided that you then serve for a certain period of time. So that might give some, some of you some perspective on that. Okay, and I think there was a question directed at Mr. Fontana. I'll be finishing my associate's degree, that one. Yeah, so I think um, yeah, it sounds like if you're you're finishing up your degree, you're doing running start. If you had some challenges because of this online environment, um, you know maybe your maybe your grades weren't where you wanted them to be. Um, you're kind of waiting on some nursing programs, trying to step back and look at your future. You know that. It could be a great time even to step back and say, okay, are there any classes maybe that I wanna retake? A lot of colleges are looking at possibly returning to campus winter 2022. So if you have like a year of time where you're kind of pausing and, and looking at what you've done and your path forward, maybe see, are there any classes I could retake uh, and boost my grade up? Um, you know, and then with those higher grades, reapply to some nursing programs maybe in the next year. And then if you're still at that point trying to decide what to do, you know, that can be a good time to sit down with a career counselor or academic advisor. But I anticipate, um, you know, TCC offering on campus classes, especially in the sciences this fall. Um, and, and many colleges trying to resume on campus classes by winter of, of 2022. Um, so that, that might be a, something to think about. Sorry. And one of the questions is, I've heard about being part of a research study would be beneficial, um, but I don't know much about research and what kind of ways would I benefit from assisting in a research study and how would I find opportunities to participate? So there's there's quite a few research opportunities, especially in the area that you can get involved in. Um, depending on the age, sometimes they do require an age requirement to participate, but there's a lot through like local community colleges if they have um, four-year universities have a lot of research studies and they, they need students or individuals to kind of help conduct them. Um, and so if you're interested in that, it's a great way to get experience in like the medical settings on what maybe they're studying. So if it's a study that's gonna look at um, like the kidneys or something. And so they need volunteers to help with like paperwork or even facilitating some of the needs of those of that clinical trial or something. It's a great way to get hands-on experience within these programs. And also another thing about research is that's another career pathway if you're interested in like the medical health sciences, that's another route to go. So like I, I studied at St. Martin's University for my undergraduate degree and I'm actually getting a graduate degree in biological sciences to conduct research in the medical field. So that's a way to go where you're still involved in the healthcare setting, but you aren't directly in that clinical care. And there's a lot of pathways where you can go. And that's, I did a research study and that's how it kind of helped me narrow down what I wanted to do. But research studies, there's a lot of clinical application where you can get that as well with either shadowing or if it's sometimes paid in research studies, um, maybe not the volunteer aspect, but it's great hands-on experience as well. And usually you can check with local clinics, hospitals, two-year universities, and four-year universities, because they always are kind of running different studies and research projects that are available. There's a few questions that came in. 
Do you have to be over 18 for to for to be in a CNA program? 16 usually is oh, Okay, thank you, Brady. No, I will say so to be in the program, being six over 16, to be hired as a CNA, oftentimes it's 18, though some hospitals are lowering that because of the demand for CNAs, um, just in the healthcare situation we're in. So I, I believe there's some talk of even 17 year olds being hired, but you can still at least do the program and be ready to be hired uh, as a 16, 17 year old. I saw a question there that if you graduate high school with the CNA, but don't actually work as one and then apply to for college. Uh, yes, you. so for example, our nursing program we don't require that you work as a CNA. We just require that you have the license. Um, it's, that may be different at other community and technical colleges, but but at TCC, you just need to obtain the license. You don't actually have to, to have worked as one. Are there any specific steps to take in high school if you wanna be an obstetrician? Chloe, I don't know if you can answer this one for us. Sorry, I was sending a, a, a typing into a chat to send out the survey. What was the question again? Um, are there any specific steps to take in high school if you want to be an obstetrician? Well, obstetrician is, you know, a specialty within medical school, right? And so the first step is for you to go to, to attend uh, medical school, and that comes after four years of undergraduates, right? And so we're talking about like five steps beyond us, right? So it's going to be high school first, um, college, then medical school, then during your M3, you apply to your specialty to become, you know, any sort of a specialist that you want to become, right? And so as a high school student, thinking about the, you know, end goal in mind, like Dr. Stephen Covey said, and like Steve mentioned earlier, um, if your end goal is to get into a great medical school, that's going to help you get into a competitive residence program, then in high school, something you can do, right, is really fall in love with the sciences, learn, observe yourself, and become a better learner. Like, it's not just time management. It's not better note-taking skills. You almost have to get metacognitive about how you learn and how you study, how you retain information. Um, and so this way, you're building the foundations and the skill sets that you are going to use and are going to be valuable moving forward um, in undergraduate and graduate school, right? Um, so... I would do that. Um, definitely stay open-minded, right? So I really believe that looking for opportunities, making connections, right? Networking, asking for help, getting advice, that's an attitude that you take on. And one of the attitudes that the medical school will look for is going to be, are you a learner? Are you teachable? Are you willing to learn, right? And so um, adapting that uh, attitude and, and asking for help and advice for people who are in the field and been there, done it, ready to share, give you advice and support you. I think that's also um, a great, you know, mindset to have. So specific things as a high school student, definitely study skills. Um, and when you're picking your undergraduate school, you have to keep in mind that your end goal is about undergraduate school. If it's medical school, then you have to pick undergrad with the opportunities for clinical experiences, research opportunities. Um, people can write you great letters of recommendation. So. Um, you know, uh, opportunities where you can really connect with professors. So maybe those are the, a few things to keep in mind, especially as a high school student. Years to go. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Any other questions from students or comments? I know it's been a long week for everyone, lots of different speakers and programs. So it just might be a lot to think about right now. Um, I don't know if Steve or Brady can answer this one. Is it good idea to do prerequisites through Running Start so I can apply to a nursing program sooner? I would say at least because um, I'm a first year admissions counselor, Running Start is a great opportunity to take a lot of those prerequisite classes while you're in high school. So like biology, chemistry, um, maybe statistics as well, because 
uh, a lot of, at least for St. Martin's, because we do have a four-year bachelor's in nursing, sometimes we do look at those grades ahead of time because that might be something we're looking at to admit you into the nursing program. So if you've already taken some of those courses uh, and passed those courses, then you're already on a great track to, for at least for St. Martin's nursing program and maybe potentially other nursing programs in the area. Absolutely, I think you can certainly shorten your time, right? Um, one of the things though to consider is, is the grades that you earn. And so I often tell students, you know, in, in many uh, experiences, it's better to earn better, stronger grades, but go at a slower pace um, in order to avoid retaking classes. So certainly taking those classes part of running start, great opportunity, right? But overloading yourself and, and, um, and not earning the grades that you want to earn, you know, that's something always to, to think about. Absolutely. That's something to keep in mind. The healthcare, there's a lot of different paths. And I think many, when you're entering college, people think you got to do it straight away. You got to go this one path. There are many paths you can take. You can take your time with the classes that you want to really figure out what you want to do. Take the classes that you want to um, get your hands into and kind of get a feel for the, even the careers that you want. So there's no rush, but if you are, if you want to rush, it's up to you, but there's lots of pathways you can take. And there's a lot of people that can help you kind of figure out what you want to do with your career and your life. So there's a lot of options. Thank you students for coming on a sunny afternoon on Friday. Yeah. Enjoy the weekend. It's Friday. Yay.